Alice Car Doctor back with another Diag video. Today I have a 06 Scion XB. Um, the customer complaint is when accelerating, gear goes all the way up, doesn't accelerate properly. So today I'm gonna be diagnosing this Scion to see what's going on with that. Um, I'm gonna take you along for a, a test drive because I wanna verify the customer complaint first um, before I start my diagnostic process. So let me slap this camera on my head and let's jump right into it. All right, here we go. All right. I'm gonna buckle up for safety, cause that's important. See a lot of YouTubers riding around without these seatbelts doing test drives. Guys, don't do that. They make seatbelts for a reason. All right. I do believe this car was towed here. Came in on a flatbed. All right. So far, so good. It's going through all the gears properly. Now this car doesn't have no giddy up. It is a small engine. I think it's a 1.5 four cylinder. And by the looks of it, it's not very aerodynamic. It's like a brick. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. So let's give it some more gas. As of right now, it's functioning perfectly fine. So it may be an intermittent problem, meaning it goes and comes um, as the car warm up or whatever the case may be. Because from that, um, the customer complaint, it seems like she may be having a transmission problem. But as of right now, the transmission is shifting great. All righty, the test drive went well. Um, I will drive it again and hopefully I can catch something on camera. But as of right now, I'm going to hook up my scan tool and do a scan on it if I can find the OBD2 port. Um, I normally have a hard time finding it blind, but I got it today. So right now I'm gonna check it for codes. I do notice some lights are on, uh, the VSC light, ABS track off. Um, normally that indicates a, a wheel speed sensor of some sort. So let's see if my assumption is right. So I'm gonna jump right into the ABS system to make sure it's a speed sensor and, and not something else. So. Okay. Left front wheel speed sensor signal fault. Fault in ABS control system. So that's the fault. So a speed sensor wouldn't cause that complaint. So we're not gonna worry about that. Let's do engine. No codes. Let's do data display to make sure everything looks good. Nothing there. Let's go into the transmission to see <clears throat> if we can find anything. No fault codes, all right. What I'm gonna do now, um, I think I can put this in some kind of test mode. The, the, the car will test all the functions of the car. Um, I think it has to be off. 
So let me see, can I put it in the check mode? See, a little check mode right here. So use this function when directed by the shop manual. It allows two trip DTCs to be set in one trip. It tightens the DTC detection so DTCs will set easier. All right, let's put it in this mode. Do you want to enable check mode? Yes. With UX codes, okay, there's no codes. All right, it's currently in check mode, so I'm gonna fire it up and drive it again. I need to zoom out, don't I? Yep, okay. Okay, <clears throat> so after putting it in check mode, uh, the check engine light did come on. Now I want to drive it to see what it's going to do. To see if I can mimic it. Um, in check mode, <clears throat> pretty much the computer is very hypersensitive. Um, the computer will pick up the first indication of a problem. Um, versus sometimes the computer has to see that it failed two to three times before it throw a check engine light. So in check mode, it will go instantly. Okay, now we're having an issue here. The car has seemed to be hanging up in first gear. Uh, and it only switches out when I rev it all the way out. <clears throat> I think this is what she's talking about. It will not switch gears, so, um, it seems like the transmission is malfunctioning at this moment, but this is where a proper diagnostic check comes into place because um, dealing with a transmission, you have so many moving parts that can affect different things. So I'm gonna take this car back. Pretty much waiting for this guy to go bye bye okay so i'm gonna take this car back to the shop and pull the check engine light codes i was kind of being dramatic a little bit um i was hoping that it was act up on you guys but normally i will pull the check engine light codes and show you right off the hand um at this point of time guys pause the video drop a comment down below and let me know what you think is wrong with this vehicle as of right now i'm stuck in first gear and the engine is just roaring and I don't even have, this is like, I would say about 10% throttle. And it will not switch out of first gear. There we go. So when I get it back to the shop, I'm going to check a couple of things before I actually look at the codes. I don't want to ruin, ruin the reveal yet. Because once I get the codes, um, it'll point me in the test area that I need to look. So... Now that I see the transmission is acting a little funny, I wanna check the transmission fluid. So that's what I'm gonna do next. All right, so with the transmission fluid, you wanna check it while the car is running and on a level surface. Um, this dipstick, this, uh, not dipstick, but this hood prop has seen better days. Don't kill me. Right. So Oh, the transmission fluid is brown. Oh, it's more of almost getting black. So but it has transmission fluid in it. Now let's go check the codes to see what's going on. All right, let's see what codes you threw. <clears throat> I 
Ah, look at here. <clears throat> Throttle pedal positioning sensor. Switch. A. Circuit high input. So, this could mean a couple of things. Um, the sensor can be internally damaged or internally malfunctioning. Or it could be a wiring issue. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is look into the the data readout and see what the throttle is doing. The throttle put... Um, the TPS throttle position sensor so let's see and it did it after the car done warmed up coolant temp is in 194 so definitely dealing with heat here look at that throttle positioning um, sensor percentage is stuck at a hundred percent wow look at that it's not even responding. This number is supposed to be down to like 10, 12. And when you hit the gas, it's supposed to go up. Um, the reason it's 10 and 12 because the throttle plate is not fully closed. Um, if it was fully closed, it would be at zero. And not enough air would come into the car to, you know, to have it running right at idle. So it's always open slightly, about 10, 12%. So yeah, I'm stuck at 100 here. <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to do is look at my wires and double check the, um, look at my wires and look at the throttle positioning sensor. So hopefully that gives me some type of indication. Um, normally what I do, the trick for wire issues, I will grab the harness and shake it while I'm looking at my scan tool to see if it actually comes back in and out. If it does, I know I have a wiring problem. So with this system, it's a cable driven system. It's not a drive by wire. And the throttle positioning sensor sits right down in there. Hopefully you can see me point at it. So I'm gonna wiggle the wires now to see if something comes on you know comes back in if I can get to the wires oh look at that it just went down to 12 and all I do all I'm doing is touching the wires so um, I, I hopefully you didn't miss it but it's not working now so this I'm guessing right now it's corrosion around the plug this car did come up north so it's a lot of rust and oxidation going on, especially looking at the terminals, the, uh, the shock tower here is rusted, rust everywhere. So this car definitely spent some time up north. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I'm gonna get what I need to remove this air box. It looks like it's been taken up before. This is the mass airflow sensor. Let's see, can I unplug it? All right. Just move that to the side. And what I wanna do is try to unplug this this box is in my way so i'm gonna have to get my 10 millimeter and get that out the way i'll be right back all right good people i got my 10 it's also miss missing a bolt um somebody's been in here before messing around Now I can look at this connector. If it comes out for me. Oh, oh, that was a squeeze. So I don't see any corrosion. Let me take this camera off my head so we can look at it real close together. All right. I want you guys to see what I see. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit. All right, so. 
We're gonna look at this connector really well. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is look at the prongs. Now, if they're green like that, that's corrosion. And that's gonna have to be cleaned up or the whole pigtail have to be replaced. Um, Looking at the wires, it looks like something been chewing on them. Let's get down here and look at it closely. At this point, guys, I'm looking at what you guys looking at. I'm looking at it through my camera phone. So, oops. Uh, I see exposed wires. Ooh, look at that. Let me see, can I zoom in on that? That may be my problem. Let's see, yep. Wow, look at that. It's corroded and it's green. Oops, let me see. So guys, that's why it's flipping out every time I touch it. This pigtail, this throttle positioning sensor pigtail is damaged and we're gonna have to replace it. Oh, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell, let the customer know that what, you know, let the customer know what's going on with their vehicle. Um, I'm gonna get the parts. <clears throat> then I'm gonna walk you guys through how to replace this simple part. And we're gonna double check everything once I get the new pigtail put on. And we're gonna wrap this thing up. Got the new parts. So the first thing I'm gonna do, good people, is shorten it up a little bit because I don't want it that long. Uh -oh. And now as you can see, they're all the same color. So I have a trick for that. It's really just take your time pretty much and do one wire at a time because if you mess around and cut all the wires down there you'll get them confused give it a little snook make sure it's on there Now, this is where some good crimping tools come in handy. I will see, can I put a link in the description where you can find these? No, I don't, I think these are just a snap-on exclusive, so. But I'll try to find something similar to these for you guys. Now, I see a lot of mechanics, well, a lot of people, when they do electrical, they never heat shrink these. It's very important to heat shrink these because you know, moisture and won't get in there and corrode the wires. So, so we're gonna do that on this end. Then when I connect it to the car, we're gonna do it down there. Now, you can either do this with a lighter or a heat gun. I just like the lighter. It's whatever your preference is, pretty much, or whatever you have on hand. Most people are gonna have a lighter. So just as you saw, I wasn't giving it direct flame. I was kind of just waving it nice and easy over it. All right, so the next step, um, I have a razor blade somewhere up here. I'm gonna strip back some of this. No, I dropped it. I don't know how I did that. Oh, let me find it. I need that bl blade. I see it. Trying not to cut myself retrieving it. All right. So I'm gonna slice back a little bit on here. All right. Just expose some more wire. Put that back. Okay, so this is the part when you put the connector right next to the other one to make sure it's the same, or better yet, just plug it in and make sure it's the same. This one clips right in. I'll probably leave it like that. So the first one we're gonna do is the red one. Um, 
Well, I'll probably do the yellow one first. Since it's at the top. All right. It's getting a little tight to work in. I tried to cut it back far enough where the corroded wire won't mess up the new stuff. So I hope you guys can see this. I do have the camera on my head. Perfect. So this is the top wire. So I'm going to whirl this around. I probably should have removed this other tube, but looking at it, I don't think it's going nowhere because it's so rusted and uh, yeah, it'd be a good idea to remove this tube for you guys at home, but mine's over here is so rusted and it'd be more trouble. So I'm not gonna touch it. So I'm gonna work around it. Sometimes wire repair can be a pain in the butt. So if you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it. Because if you don't do it properly, you can really mess some stuff up. And I got to be very precise right now because... Um, if I mess up this cramp, I'm going to have to cut the blue because I already heat wrapped it and everything. Um, but I have faith in myself. So for you guys at home, um, you may want to heat wrap everything last. But I chose to heat wrap my, my first one first because I got confident in myself. So let's see if I make a fool of myself or not. So it's just so tight. Let me see if I can hold it down right here. Come on, baby. Don't let me down. Yep. I oh, got it. Okay. Good. <laughs> Here's the next one. All right. We're going to do the brown next. That's the middle one. So since I know the, the orientation, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the um cut the you know cut the harness all the way off. Alright, so now I can kind of show you guys where's my light? What was going on? Um I think this brown middle wire right here was corroded real bad and it broke. And that's what was making a bad connection. It appears somebody have probed on this in the past during running tests. And when they probed on this stuff, they left the they left the insulator off. They didn't wrap it back up. And over years, it just got corroded and was given an intermittent um, issue dealing with the throttle positioning sensor. So... Guys at home, it's very important to, after you make a repair, wrap it up. I like using um, shrink wrap. I put the shrink wrap over it. Duct, uh, not duct tape, but electric tape over time will get, um, it, it just won't hold up. So I normally don't do it that way. I like making, I like doing things that's going to, last longevity not a quick band-aid i tell my customers if i'm a band if you want me to band-aid it then i'm not the shop for you i will quickly send them away because at the end of the day they're my customers and i want what's best for them and when they leave my shop <laughs> i don't want to see them again because if i see them again that mean i didn't do something right 
and I would get this all the time. Well, can you just penate it for me? Um, and I'm like, no. I'm like, they'll say, yeah, I understand there's no warranty or nothing like that. Uh, I'm fine with that. Yeah, customers will say they're fine until something goes wrong. Then it becomes a problem. So that's why I always at my shop, I fix it to last. Now, last wire, hopefully it doesn't give me a hard time. And once I finish fixing this, we're gonna go back over it and verify it. Um, you saw what it was doing before. It was pretty much staying at 100. It wasn't even throwing a check engine light code for this. That's the funny part. All right, let me, it's always the last one I mess up on, so I'm like being extra cautious here right now. Come on, come on. This is the scary part when you go to tug on it to make sure it's on there. Door blew where the half and is. I go to tug on it and it comes right off and I'm like, ah, oh, come on. Alright. So here's the next hard part is he shrink wrapping it in his tight quarters. So try doing that now. Very important process. Do not leave this stuff open where moisture can get in. It. I cannot stress enough. Make this good practice. And if it doesn't have a um, material that will shrink wrap, um, you must get some type of shrink wrap on there. Um, try not to use electrical tape. You can, it'll work. But from my experience, and I'm setting the fire, uh, from my experience, it just, it doesn't work that well. Guys, write down in the comment, let me know what you guys electrical repair. Oh, and my light's going dead. That's why it's blanking like this. But I'm almost finished. But write down in the comment below. Let me know what's your guys' experience with electrical tape. Does it hold up? Ah, my lighter is getting hot. <laughs> or it, do it hold up. Uh, all right, so I'm going to wrap back up now at this point of time I, I am gonna go back over it and put electric tape around this I'm probably not gonna show that on camera because it's pretty redundant not redundant but we all know how to wrap stuff with electric tape It's pointless showing it on camera but now it is the moment of truth testing to make sure this fixed the issue Ugh. Oh, I do have the air box off. Let me, <laughs> I guess I should put that back on. I was so anxious to <laughs> try it out. I forgot to put the air box back on. Silly me. So I'm just gonna lightly put it in place because I am going to go back over it and um, tape up those wires so I want to be able to pull this off real quick so just doing that for testing purposes All right. there we go all right So we're gonna do the same exact thing before. Um, I'm gonna look at it, the readout, and then I'm gonna go under the hood and jiggle the wires to make sure it's fixed. So as of right here, 12%, I'm gonna give it a little gas. So it's corresponding to every time I go up and throttle. So that's great. So I'm gonna turn it off and let's see. So I don't have to race the engine. 
So every time I move the throttle and it stops at 78. So let's see if this problem is fixed. So before I just wiggle the wires and it'll jump to like a hundred or so. So that's why I didn't tighten none of this down because I knew I'm have to go back in here. All right, so wiggling the wires like before. Let me see, can I, no change. So, yep, that is fixed. So good people, I hope you enjoyed that diagnostic process. <clears throat> Just today was a little bit strange, but hey, I got it done, figured it out, verified the customer complaint. I'm going ahead and put this back together, um, just the air box. I, like I said, I'm not gonna show that, it's just so simple. My main concern was the throttle positioning sensor. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. Alex Car Doctor out, see you guys on the next video.